Come walk along the makeover process to see how we took this kid's bathroom from boring and uninspired to beautiful, all on a budget with lots of DIY touches. I want, can't wait to show you the whole thing. All right, here is the bathroom that we are starting with. This bathroom looks the same as it did right when we moved in, just with more kid stuff around it. It is um, fine. There's nothing offensive about this bathroom. Hello. It is like mm, almondy. Toilet is something that is wrong. <laughs> and um, this is all like almond too. In the grand scheme of things, we would love to like really change out some things in this bathroom. We'd like to get a new tub, we'd like to tile the walls, but we're not ready to do that right now. So we are going to do a budget friendly, quick fix makeover, but I think it'll last us a while. We weren't planning on doing floors, but I looked at the pricing and it really wasn't that expensive. And since we are going to be replacing the toilet, which is one of the things in the bathroom, we removed really all the old baseboards and the electric heater that we are no longer well. using and the new old toilet. In while we are replacing the toilet. So that's what we're going to start with today. My husband took a vacation day. We're excited. All right, guys, look at this. Sorry, I'm thinking. I'm so excited. The floor looks so good. And now we've got some work to do over here on the wall, but the floor is in and the toilet is in. Okay, I got so much done today, which is so exciting. Now, I was originally going to paint this vanity, the same color that I was going to paint the top half of the wall, except in the shower. But now I'm thinking I might use what I have on hand and just get started on the vanity right now. Because I'm itching to like do some more. Well, I've, I've got a moan and I kind of want to do more. Hmm, let's see. This surface was previously painted, so I sanded it down really well first before I started with the paint. Then I made sure to clean it off really well so the paint would stick. Removed all the hardware and all the doors. And then I could finally start painting. All the prep work is really worth it for a good finished result at the end. The first coat, especially with a dark color, is going to look bad. Just make sure that you don't have lumps and bumps on it because you will see that in the finished product. This is after two coats and it looks so nice. Make sure you use a clear polycrylic on the end to seal it really well. Now it's time to paint the walls. We're using the same color that we did in our living room, which is Sherwin-Williams Retreat. It's a really pretty medium green color and I love how it looks in this bathroom. When you're painting, make sure that you don't put too much paint on your roller and spread it out really, really nice and thin so you don't have any drips or any ridges in the finish of your paint at the end. I can finally start working on putting up this beadboard wallpaper. I am excited to see how it goes. I'm using extra adhesive because that's what the review said to do. Let's start going. I will almost always choose to do like a wooden fixture or something that's a little bit more permanent instead of wallpaper, but this time for a temporary fix, wallpaper was perfect. I'm excited because the reviews were really good on this stuff. One thing that really made a difference at the end was the caulking and the finishing of it. As you can see, when I did the wallpaper, it left a bunch of jagged edges on the seams. So if you use, make sure it's a paintable caulk, then it is really, really easy to finish those seams up well. Another tip, use a baby wipe and it will go so smoothly and you won't have really messy fingers. Watch the difference here in the sink area. This is the before and then after caulking, look at how nicely that seam turned out. It looks so much more professional and finished. And now it's time to work on assembling the wood frame for the mirror. We used the existing mirror, took off the old frame, and built this simple, simple wood frame around it. Make sure that you use a pre-stained wood conditioner every time. It will help the finish to be much less splotchy at the end. All you need to do is roll it on with a foam brush and rub it off well before you stain. It only takes an extra like five, 10 minutes before you start. And it's definitely, definitely worth it in the end. Just like we did when we made these mirrors before, I used some flat L brackets to add some interest to the corners of the pieces, but also to add just a nice little decorative touch. This is the spray paint that I used on them. It's a nice like hammered metallic finish. Then we used some heavy duty liquid nails to adhere the existing mirror that we had onto the back of the frame. Then I used my favorite stain ever, which is Minwax Early American to finish it off.
We cut away at the molding on the wall to fit the mirror exactly, and then we installed the mirror by drilling directly into studs in the wall. I put the brackets up and look at the difference that it makes. And look, things are starting to come together. I love how the beadboard looks with the green paint and the rustic wood. And then I also love these touches of gold with the hardware that we got. Time for finishing touches. Now this is a picture that I bought off of Etsy and put in a Target frame. Then we put in some cute brass hooks that we got from Target as well and added the cutest bath towels for my kids. I love these so much. I got them at Walmart. I have all this stuff linked to my blog post, by the way. So just click the link below to get to all the links for these things. I didn't get a video of it, but I did paint the beadboard at the end. That was the final thing that I had to do. And I think we can say this bathroom remodel is complete. I mean, I feel like we really nailed it with having an affordable, attainable design that works for kids, but also works for guests and will grow with the kids as they get older. I'm so happy.